Joining us right now is Wisconsin governor and the author of a brand new book called Unintimidated. Scott Walker, good morning to you. Good to be with you guys. Okay. Before we talk to you about your book, we want to talk about just that. First off, what about going directly to insurance companies? You know, this whole thing is just a mess and it gets worse every day. Last week we talked about delaying in Wisconsin right. the transition we're going to make to move people into the marketplace out of Medicaid by three months because I said as much as it would be politically easy to point to that and say, aha, I told you so because sure. I was against Obamacare. I didn't do a state exchange. I didn't take the Medicaid expansion. In the end, there's real people falling through the cracks, and that's the frustrating part. As Republicans, we should offer a better alternative, but we should also be empathetic with the people of the country who are really kind of stuck in no man's land. Will, will the failure of Obamacare be um, at the helm of the ship going forward? In the election. Oh, there's no doubt about it. 2014, you look at, I, I think it's one of, one of the key elements to getting the United States Senate back. If you're in Arkansas, Louisiana, West Virginia, Montana, New Hampshire, all those states are states where you know, I think you've got potentially very challengeable uh, Democrats mm -hmm. who themselves are very worried about that. A compelling argument is to postpone this until it can actually work. I think most Americans understand whether they have supported the Affordable Care Act to begin with or not. This is not working. You just have to talk uh, one American who lives at 1600 Pennsylvania into it and then you'd be okay. What about the state of the Tea Party? Uh, going forward 2016 uh, and even the midterm elections next year, how potent a force will it be this time? Well, I think, you know, the, the, some people in the media, not you guys, but some people try to explain it as monolithic, as it's all one group, exactly the same. What it really is is years of pent-up frustration over sure. the growing size of the federal government. And Obamacare was kind of the, you know, the tipping point that, that kind of blew the, the lid off the kettle here. And I think people are still very frustrated with government, even more so when they see how incompetent the federal government is when it comes to Obamacare. So that's going to be an issue in the election. In your book, you talk about how it seemed like the whole world for a while was against you. You'd hop on our show in the middle yeah. of the recall election, and you seemed to us to be unintimidated and cool. But underneath, what was really going on with you and your family? Well, it was pretty intense. I mean, one of the things I mentioned in the book is literally a, a letter that was in it, probably the biggest shocking one, but I had a stack of death threats. But one was directed at my wife, who talked about how Wisconsin's never had a governor uh, assassinated and how she maybe should think about that and try and persuade me. Talked about where she worked, where my time we're both in public they schools. They took over the main, your house. I it mean, was on oh, thousands of people in front of my house. I mean, mm -hmm. they, the stories we talk about in the book are things like gluing the door shut on an elementary school I went to go read at, uh, about people dressed up as zombies protesting coming up in front of a Special Olympics gathering where I was speaking at. I mean, just really unbelievable things that I think most people saw the protests, most people heard about the recall, but until you read the book, you don't fully understand what was really going on in the state at that time and why we did what we did. Sure. But you didn't turn and run, no. right? But you might run. What about, let's talk 2016. What are your, well, what are your intentions, Governor? <laughs> for, for me, any, any Republican, uh, me or anybody else who's not focused on 2014 is really doing a disservice. So we'll see what the future holds after that for anybody out there. But, but I think 14 is the key. We got to get the Senate back. What we showed in our book, not only in Wisconsin, but other key battleground states across America, where in 2010, not only were governors elected as Republicans, but legislative majorities, is that was the key to success. You have a whole team in place. You can push aggressive reforms forward. We need to do that in Washington. And governors, you believe, are more than qualified. Yeah, I mean, I, there's good, you know, Paul Ryan is probably one of the exceptions out there. He's one of those guys that really has been very compelling. But by and large, Republican governors, 30 of us across America, are getting real reforms right. done. And I think that's what people need in Washington. And when you look at the disastrous rollout of the Affordable Care Act, you really need to have somebody as president who has run something. Right. Well, there's a big difference. I mean, there's a lot of critiques of late that apparently, and I'll let others uh, comment on the sources on this, but so much of what's happening in the White House and in the administration is driven by the political team, not sure. the policy team. As a governor, what we learned, and I would say not just me, but other governors out there, is you got to talk to your policy team first to make sure you can actually do what you're promising out there. Uh, in our state, I hope one of the things people know is whether you like me or hate me, you don't have to wonder if I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. And that's not happening in this White House. Right. And maybe by your track record, that would be an impetus to run or get your momentum behind it. But I just read that how governors sometimes say, you've got to learn to talk to everybody. But do you have relationships in Washington that you function there? Oh, in our case, in our state, what we do as a practice is we meet with the legislative leaders from both parties uh, once a week whenever they're in session. That's refreshing concept. Yeah. Well, even, even if you disagree, I, I remember in the book I tell an interesting story about meeting with the two Democrat leaders and their jaw dropped the day I told them I was going to do what's now Act 10, our reforms. But, but yeah. we thought we owed it to them to at least tell them up front what we were doing. Right, and they left. Yeah, and 14 of them left. That's why I love the sticker I got from Sean Duffy. One, one walker sure. beats 14 runners. That's one of the chapters <laughs> in my book. The book is right, called yeah, Unintimidated. It. It's kind of the kind of book you write just before you run for president. Scott Walker, right. thank you very much for joining us live.